It is Monday. We're kicking off week two of the HUGS program for nuclear physics. Week one was super eventful. We've had lectures on quantum chromodynamics, deeply virtual Compton scattering. Uh, we were given virtual tours of Jefferson Lab. There's, there's been a lot, but I am running late right now. I need to be attending a lecture now on writing CVs and applications in academia. So I'm going to go ahead and hop into this lecture. I'm actually really looking forward to it. It's probably going to be one of the most useful talks of this entire program, I think. And as long as no one expects me to be interactive and social at 6.30 in the morning, I think I'm really going to enjoy this. So let's go ahead and check this out. So the next point is that when you're applying for postdoc or faculty searches, your CV is actually relatively less important than the reference letters you get. Part of this is that when you're doing an academic application, if you think about how large the field of nuclear physics is, it's rather small. So you know a whole lot of the letter writers. What you're very much interested in is, is what these people who you kind of know um, say about the prospective candidate. Okay, and, and one final point that occasionally when, when we're doing searches and, and we're discussing the candidates, we want to reference something that was said and we want to find it again. Here I took one CV I received and just show you it was divided up so I could clearly easily find things about education research the dissertation, teaching, all, all nicely separated and easy to identify. That talk was really interesting. It's starting to make things a bit real since I only have a couple more years left of my PhD and then this whole postdoc thing is going to become very real very quickly. We just had this platform to ask the presenter tons of questions on CV related things, what we should emphasize how to become more competitive. It went a little bit long. I'm about to go right into a lecture on gluons in QCD. So it looks like we're picking back up with the QCD lectures, quantum chromodynamics. I don't really know what to expect for these ones. I think that could be very complicated because the whole thing with gluons, what makes quantum chromodynamics so difficult is the additional structure that is worked into the theory. With quantum electrodynamics, it's relatively simple because it's what's referred to as an abelian gauge theory. Uh, and as a consequence, you get things like photons don't directly interact with each other. But with gluons, with QCD, that's not the case. They can do that. You can write out these Feynman diagrams where the gluons are directly connected. And as a result, the theory is a lot more complicated. That's what's referred to as a non-abelian gauge theory. <laughs> So this has the potential to be probably one of the most complicated talks of the school, summer school, but I'm definitely looking forward to it. So let's go see what this is all about. So far, I am really digging this talk. I, the slides are so well put together, but you may be wondering why are there so many talks on QCD throughout the summer school? Nope. Well, I think part of it is because there's a lot of different applications and a lot of different regimes and subspecialties within QCD. For example, all of my stuff is perturbative. And what I mean by that, I've said it a million times in previous videos, in perturbative calculations, you can find out exactly what the answer almost is. So if you're probing the inner structure of the proton, and let's pretend that the proton is only made up of three quarks that are interacting with each other, these interactions take place over a certain amount of time. And if you're probing the proton at very high energies, that corresponds loosely to a very quick snapshot of what's going on inside of the proton. And in that very small amount of time, we can treat it as if the quarks haven't had enough time to communicate with each other. In other words, in that small time window, you can treat them as if they're almost free particles where perturbation theory is appropriate. But at smaller energies, close to around one GeV or so, which just so happens to be around the mass of the proton, you can't do that anymore. You can't do perturbation theory. So it's kind of ironic that where it would be very nice to be able to consistently apply perturbation theory to the system just so happens to be where it more or less gets thrown out of the window and you have to treat things exactly. So that's where people like Lattice QCD uh, specialists come in. So in these talks, all of this is going to be uh, non-perturbative QCD, which is Definitely something I don't know very much about, so this is going to be very valuable. Now we're about to get started on the second lecture of gluons in QCD. I think you get the idea there. I don't really like showing the same lecture twice if it's split into a couple parts. So I'll just see you after that ends.
one thing that I've tasked myself to do throughout this whole hugs program is to try to ask a question every single talk. And the reason I'm doing that is because I want to get better at asking questions. One, it forces me to pay attention to the stuff that's outside of my field. And two, even if something is unclear enough to where I'd want to ask a question, sometimes it's difficult to know how to phrase it to where the speaker immediately knows what the hell I'm even asking in the first place. So, so far I've been pretty successful with that, which I'm, I'm pretty proud of. Uh, the next talk is going to be on meson spectroscopy. Mesons are particles made out of like quark anti quark pairs. So the pion would be a probably the canonical example. And meson spectroscopy, at least to my understanding, is like a way of identifying these different kinds of particles based on their spin, angular momentum, things like that by looking at the spectrum. And actually this is going to be on experimental meson spectroscopy. So I'm really excited for this because in the first video, I think I said one of the things I'm most excited for is to learn what else is out there besides what my own research interests are. I had this very narrow perspective of what nuclear physics was. And I think this is about as far away as from my own research as you could get while still being in that same umbrella topic that is nuclear physics. So I'm excited to learn probably quite a few new things. I'm going into this with very minimal prior knowledge. It turns out that my class that I took in particle physics ended up being very applicable to understanding these last two lectures on meson spectroscopy, namely how do we know that we've created a certain particle by looking at what it can decay into and seeing if you see a spike in the number of those particles that were made at around the energy of the particle that you're looking for. Um, and also just seeing what quantum numbers are conserved for certain processes like isospin or strangeness and a hell of a lot more than that. So I didn't actually feel like an idiot in the lecture for once, which was a surprise to be sure, but a welcome one. There is one more lecture that I have to go to for the day. It's on C quarks inside of the proton and neutron. Um, so the three quarks that you think of that are that make up the proton are called the valence quarks, but because of the binding energy, a lot of quark anti quark pairs can also be popping in and out inside of the proton as well. Those are called C quarks. So this lecture is going to be all on that stuff. I'm probably not going to record anything from it because I think this video is getting long enough as it is. So I might just cut it here. One thing I want to say before the video ends though is that I'm going to be doing a bit of a Q and A with some grad students in the Hugs program where we go over some of your questions. So I put out a post in my my community tab go check it out and leave some questions if you like this video should be out before we actually record that video hopefully so yeah go do that but I hope you guys enjoyed this video let me know in the comment section if you did I'll see you guys there